so really, I guess the question is, um, at, at what point do you say, well, I'm not, I'm not a thief and I'm not going to get this through, through illegal means, but it kind of seems like you, you want me to get it through, through, uh, means that are kind of, kind of gray legally. So, um, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another installment of Club Moffat Talks. I am your uh, recently quaffed uh, host, Chris DiPanetta. I'm Joe. I'm Ryan. And we are joined today by Scotty Coppage. And I'm sorry, I've, I didn't get your name before we started. I'm so sorry about that. No, Shannon. Shannon Coppage. Shannon Coppage. It's very nice to meet you both. Um, so... Again, I don't think that the three of us need to really talk about what our titles are and what we do, because I think by this point, listeners hopefully have an idea of, of what that entails. But why don't you tell us about yourselves, what you do and what your what your interests are? Absolutely. Well, uh, it's it may be easier to tell you what we don't do, because there's a smorgasbord of things on the menu. Uh, we have a, a podcast. It's called Mac and Cheese Movies, Comfort Food, Comfort Movies. Yeah. What we do is we watch a movie and we cook a dish that's either in the movie or related to the movie in some way. And we talk about the film and we talk about cooking the dish. Yeah. Oh, so that's we have incredible. That. Yeah. Have a lot of fun with that. We've got some uh, short-term rentals here in town. Uh, actually, I started the first one in Wichita Falls in 20. 12, I guess. I don't think there's another one until 2015. So now there's there's quite a few popping up all over the place. But um, we do that. Uh, we foster dogs sometimes. Uh, oh. We go up to New York State. Got one in the living room right now. Hoping she keeps it down a little bit. But <laughs> Well, if she doesn't, you have to bring her here. That's right. Let, That's us, right. let us play with her. Absolutely. But we've got a lot of interest. So obviously movies, music, we're always going to concerts and shows and um, I'm just reading, you know, like I, I do some casual gaming on my phone, not legit gaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so all of that nonsense that I that I laid on you all before we started, that's kind of like that's way beyond what, what you would worry about. <laughs> I, I'm assuming because that's like that's that's like three levels deep of enthusiast <laughs> on on the on the high on the heist kind of thing you were doing like, um like the content the, heist? That, that, yeah the content heist <laughs> well yeah, yeah I guess so you were you were laying a lot of stuff down. It's it sounded like Ocean's Eleven, what you were talking about. <laughs> it was like if the banks didn't want you to steal the money, why would why they? Have, yeah, why would they just have it out if they didn't challenge. want you to steal it? Um, but that does yeah, that does lead to some interesting questions though, because it's like, well, you haven't sold this thing in like fifteen years, and you don't even have the rights to it anymore. It, it got sold to like some law firm in Sweden. So what are we doing? I'm, here? I'm not. I'm not sure where the money's going anymore if I buy this for $400 off of some eBay listing. Are, are video games in the Library of Congress? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that was my, um, that was my, um, uh, a, a project that I did a few years ago was um, video game archiving for like a, a fake collection that that was like the entire semester project was like make this collection of whatever a lot of people did manga or like sci-fi literature or whatever and i was like well i'm i'm a i'm a smart aleck i'm i can i've done this before at work i'm gonna try a video game collection and the one the one thing they said was you cannot use library of congress you can use any other like any other forms of like archival or or like subject listings, but you cannot use another library's, um, like their own listings and you can't use the Library of Congress. And I had no idea, like my, my whole, like my project became a thesis that this is, this is like the most catastrophically unorganized uh, piece of like library archiving, like in any medium. So it does exist, but. Interesting. Yeah, I, I had no idea that the Library of Congress had that. I have a Library of Congress library card. Oh. Um, it's very exciting. 
thing. I should have like nice. broken that out so I could yeah. show it to you guys. I mean, yeah. it wouldn't help for everyone else, but I, it was, <laughs> that was like, one of the main things I wanted to do the last time I went to DC was I was like, okay, so how do you do this? And it was like, you go across the street, you go down into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's, you that's hang really out cool. for a while. <laughs> do you get to do like uh, interlibrary loan stuff? Do you like, do, you do they have their, their whole procedure and i haven't actually used it a whole lot oh. mainly i just kind of wanted it <laughs> oh of course I got yeah. a, i've gotten on there some i've i've checked some things i've done some things with it but really mainly it was just the acquisition of that you oh know? yeah i had it in my wallet for a while it was like but do you have one of these <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like doing the lord of the rings uh the new zealand walk it's like well i did it yeah did it's you, like did you, you get you to like walk to mordor do you have a library of congress library card and, and <laughs> if and if someone says yes then you have to like you're legally obligated to be their friend for life uh either oh. that or you just like kind of walk away you know walk away, yeah. <laughs> like, well, well, okay enemy. that's the other that's the other uh side. the other option mm -hmm. yeah you know i haven't haven't come across that yet so we'll see what happens Which uh so so next up getting all that out of the way next up we have uh just to keep on track a little bit here um sure. we're, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in on campus or like in the community right now and uh as we've said in the past few podcasts what's going on uh on campus right now is really nothing <laughs> because it's summer uh we have a drum corps here who are who have been practicing for about a month now i've seen them out outside yeah they, like they of, sound so cool. I'm, it's taking all of my willpower to not go over and just watch them because they mm -hmm. sound so cool. I, it's been like 15 years since I've been in, in marching band and I I still have nightmares about um, about uh, having to play at like homecoming or something and not being able to perform like the entire semester. And then it's like, okay, well, you practice the music, right? Use your peripherals to, to do the entire halftime show um so it, it kind of gives me both nightmare feelings and nostalgia whenever i go out there and listen to them practicing so it's like oh i kind of want to just want to go out there i want to i want to see what they're up to because it, it just it's it's so it's a it's a part of my life that's never going to come back so you should tell uh, them that you should bring them like all sonic drinks or something yeah you know what that'd be fun yeah we just have a big pallet of water i only like, see like like maybe 10 of them out there at a okay. time you could probably know. juggle that it's not like a hundred people or anything no but. no they because they all practice separately like you have the the pit and then you have the the main percussion marching line and then you'll have like the brass or whatever they they have elsewhere uh practicing on some other field so yeah that's they're they're not all together otherwise yeah it would be it would sound like a, a cacophony with with our acoustics here i've heard our band uh, practice all together mm -hmm. before whenever you're actually in there it sounds fine like you can hear everything as you are but the further out you get the more the echoes just make everything sound like a nightmare um so every now and then i'll hear that i haven't heard that yet from from our uh from our drum corps people but yeah you'll you'll see them like out in the quad or something and it's just so fascinating it's it's so cool watching them practice we don't live too terribly far away we live like kind of on the other side of lake sykes lake mm. so we'll hear things kind of just echoing across from msu and we're just like i wonder what's happening over there <laughs> <laughs> something cool's going down there just different times of day different times of week you're just like no no idea but <laughs> i'm interested i'm enthralled it's the the atmosphere is really really unique. Um, I think a lot of these things we we've, we've probably mentioned before, Joe. Yeah. Um, they're just farm, ongoing. Yeah, they're they're just happening throughout the summer. Farmers market hours, um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, public uh, library has summer story times uh, Thursday at ten thirty. Uh, Wichita Falls Brewing Company has live trivia Thursday nights. Um, fall semester starts on the 22nd and the harder than hell hundred is August 27th. Um, if you're going to do that, I think I said it in the last, uh, the last recording, but if you're going to do that, please be careful because, uh, I think this year it's the closest it's actually gotten to hell, uh, for the hotter and hell hundred. So, uh, please, <laughs> please hydrate and, and 
pace yourself because it's uh it's it's not great out there it's hot in my office i can't imagine <laughs> yeah my office is cold i'm wearing a jacket Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I, ah, their offices are next to each other, by the way. So something weird's happening in this. Yeah, room. I'm sucking all the the heat and energy even from <laughs> from both offices because I'm in the middle of these two, and it's yeah, it's I'm sweating. that actually explains a lot. Mm -hmm. You've got like a little hurricane happening in your office, you yeah. know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that reminds me, Scotty. We need to go pick up our CSA box tomorrow at the farmers market. We get the uh, the community supported agriculture. You can sign yeah. up for oh. share, and uh, and we share our share with like multiple people. <laughs> That's really cool. So, can't wait to go get some more zucchini. But thinking about nice. making a ratatouille or something because they just <laughs> keep throwing it at us. <laughs> We're like, we get it, zucchini season. <laughs> Yeah, we've been, my wife and I have been thinking about starting like a little, not like a garden, but like having like the big planters, putting them out in our backyard. And we've been talking about like doing zucchini and squash. It's like, I just don't want to go outside right now, but otherwise we've been. Well, if you do that, Chris, about. what I suggest doing is doing what they do at the, uh, do a spring and autumn garden instead of a summer garden. Type yeah, of I, I assume that that would work a lot better here as well. I looked at our, um our growing schedule thing the like the the agriculture like scheduling thing and it's like during the summer it's just like a a month and a half blank space where it's like don't grow or harvest or do anything with any of your plants because it's this is just not the right climate for it i actually got like a little grape tomato plant i do grape tomatoes and like basil like every year and I planted them and I paid attention to them for about two weeks and then it got hot and they're still alive. I think. Oh, like the basil's still alive. I don't know about that tomato plant. I was, God. I even got like its little cage out there and made like a cage out of like a cattle panel or something a few years <laughs> back because they just got so big. Not this year. It's looking uh, real sad and dribbled. <laughs> oh, I love grape tomatoes too. That's that's a real shame. You got to put a little bow on the side of the the cage though, just to make it feel like it's doing okay. You go out there, give them some encouragement. <laughs> My dad has done gardening for years, but he's quit in the last ten years just because he says at this point there's so much drought that all the birds and all the squirrels in the neighborhood will literally eat anything, and so his yeah, his, it's not that the heat will destroy his plants; it's that the the natural the wildlife of the area will just decimate it we have a we have a little squirrel buddy who hangs out by the loading uh, bay who we've decided to name Sploot uh Oops. because because uh ashley our, our tech services librarian uh noticed that um you can go out there like later in the evening and this the squirrel will be laid like completely flat <laughs> on the pavement so um yeah she said she he just he just splutes down and turns into a little flat squirrel puddle. puddle. So yeah, a squirrel puddle. Yeah. So someone someone uh, brought it a big like thing of water to uh, to cool down with. So uh, yeah, it's I don't know what that thing was doing before the water, but yeah, it's just absolutely. Uh, I, I forgot to mention earlier um, since y'all were talking about things that go on in the community. I'm a uh, the current serving president of the circuit, which is a young professionals organization uh, that partners with the chamber. And so oh. that 18 to 40 age range. So that's really kind of like y'all's wheelhouse, but uh, we've had some really cool, I mean, there's, it basically focuses on mentorship, community engagement and personal growth. But uh, so everybody has a mentor and that has been a very successful part of that. But like one of our, we have monthly programs and our last month's program was really cool in that it was salary and benefits negotiation, Ooh, which no. I have never been to a program like that before. I don't know that I'd ever really even seen anything like that on offer, mm -hmm. which uh, from hearing some employers, they were like, we don't want our employees to learn how to do that. <laughs> But it was a fantastic program. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there because. What did you say this happened? Uh, that was last month. I know, but we're oh, gonna, yeah. we're gonna make you, that you, an you, annual. You should deal. join the circuit. Yeah, you're under forty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. so, sure, sure. Anyway, I, I've been so excited about that program just because I had had never experienced anything like that before, and uh, yeah, it did not disappoint. <laughs> That's cool. When's your next one? 
Uh, our next one, I'd have to look that up. I'm gonna okay. get back. Yeah, that, that's I don't have it right in front of me. Is it gonna be one in August? Yeah, there's one every month, but, okay. but yeah. So where would you go to um, look for information or sign up? <laughs> well, you can go to the witch.fallschamber.com website and we have a tab on there. So that's the easiest place. You can also go to Facebook, follow us on Facebook, and all of the events are listed there. So yeah. sounds good. Uh, yeah, we might before we post this, we might like see if we can find that information and then that in the show notes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit of free advertising. Uh, right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, before we, yeah. because we're already one. kind of starting to get into like the like talking more about about what you two do like before we get really deep into that um we have a little uh tradition here where we talk about what we're watching or reading or what games we're playing or just what have you like what are you um occupying yourself with at the moment well um so i have i generally have some sort of fiction that i read at home for fun and then i have like the book that goes everywhere else right now it's like i call it my gym book you know because i'm like okay. i'll read some nonfiction. look at me um so right now my fiction is, i'm rereading one of my favorite series uh by sarah lyons fleming it's the until the end of the world series it's like a zombie apocalypse oh. kind of thing um i don't know why but that was very comforting to me during the pandemic <laughs> I, yeah i like it a good old it could be worse yeah, I but. think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. And then uh, that my gym book so recently has been uh, The Untethered Soul, Journey Beyond Yourself by Michael Allen Singer. And um, yeah, so that's the book that I carry around while I'm walking to where like people in our neighborhood or at the gym are like, oh, you're the girl who reads while she walks. And I'm <laughs> like, that is me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> So, and then um, we've been watching, we've been watching The Boys on oh. Amazon Prime. Yeah. So, what else have we been watching, Shannon? We've also been watching <laughs> The Big Bang Theory. Oh. <laughs> so re-watching that, because we watched Young Sheldon after I finished uh, Julia, which is like Julia Child on HBO Max. So, mm. and I was like, well, why don't I rewatch this entire series? So <laughs> he's normally watching a whole lot more than me, but you know. Uh, what have you got going on, Scotty? I'm reading this book. It's called Fast Feast Repeat. It's about um, intermittent fasting. I'm trying to get healthier this summer and try to like lose some weight and try to not have heart issues later and kind of really try to take my body kind of seriously now that I'm in my 40s. Um, so I'm reading this book right now. I've been, I've seen the Top Gun movie six times in the theater oh wow yeah uh, it's like we have the amc stubs like three movies a week you can go to and you pay 20 bucks a month for it so i'll just if i'm not doing anything else it's like a really smooth easy movie to like watch and enjoy and i'll just like go see it in the afternoon you know because I, I teach um seventh grade english so i'm like i have the summer off so i'm just like going in there just knocking it out yeah well that's awesome yeah i my wife hadn't seen the original. What? So yeah, so this new one's coming out. Everyone's going nuts about it, and I'm like, yeah, let's go see that. And and she goes, well, I haven't seen the original, and I'm like, are you kidding? Uh, so we watched that the other day, and I was like, see, it's this is this is kind of an excellent movie. There's a reason why people love Top Gun so much. Um, there was that and something. There was something else that she hadn't watched before either that I was just like, oh yeah. Um, she hasn't seen the, the Matrix or Blade Runner. And, and I keep saying, like, you, you need to, I, I have to watch 2049 s soon at some point before I, like, osmosis gather, that like, the been entire out a story. Long time. What's that? 2049's been out a long time. Can I know, it's, it's been out a long time now. And I'm just like, well, I, I don't like to watch movies on my own, uh, which, uh, Recently, I got into the the Marvel stuff, so it's pretty much been watching movies on my own for uh -huh. yeah like, a few weeks now. Because she's not in, she's not interested in any of that. She likes the boys a lot, but I think it's more because the tone and the themes and like the actual like the the really aggressively um, uh, poignant like social commentary uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. and and probably also the the graphic nature of it. especially this season good lord 
uh, yeah, we're still in the first season, so no. no. <laughs> There's uh, the start of season three has some stuff that like I was turning to my, to my wife and I was like, I am so glad our daughter is not remembering things yet. Like I'm, I'm glad that she's not in the phase where where she has like, like long term memory because I don't want her to remember this show. <laughs> This will be a piece of cake to compare to the shows that will come out when she's 16 or whatever. Yeah, yeah that yeah, that's so have you that's seen true. Thor? Yeah, I've like Thor was a lot of fun. Love and Thunder. Love yeah, and that was good. Wasn't that that's, so fun, Joe? It was, it yeah, was. I just danced in my seat. I was just like, ah. Right. Yeah, I, I uh, love Taika Waititi too. I'm I'm really glad yes. that, he's, that he's involved. Oh, have, have you seen uh Our Flag Means Death? Yes. I haven't yes. finished. Oh, it's it so good. Yes. I, yeah. I knew about the the Steve uh, Bonnet story before that, though. There was an internet video oh, that, that sort of I, circulated around, and he was just, just telling us that that's like just, a real person. I didn't realize that was yeah. A real, it was based on like a real thing. Yeah, uh, he told bedtime stories to his crew. He taught them how to sing and like read and whatever. Like, yeah, and he was like the actual like his relationship with Blackbeard is. It's not the most well known part of his past, but yeah, it's like yeah, Blackbeard totally used his. Uh, uh, his generous nature to do piracy for a little while uh but yeah that that show is is great um what we do in the shadows is really good that that sees oh my that season just started i think i just yeah, there's, that, like, I think two episodes three, behind. four episodes yeah yeah I'm, I'm a few episodes behind on that i i'm um patiently watching the end of better call saul as well and um can i complain about this last episode it was <laughs> It was so bad. <laughs> what else is this forum for? Do it. <laughs> I, I don't have anyone else who's watching that show that I can talk to about it. Just my wife, and she's she's out of town right now with the baby. And I'm like, and I told her, okay, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and watch this one because I'm lonely. And I watched it mad. Like within 10 minutes, I was just watching it scowling. Like this is there's there's three episodes after this. What is what is happening? And I just I was texting her the whole time, like, don't watch this one. Don't just skip it. Just Watch it on your own if you have to watch it because I'm not rewatching this one. I'm just ah, it's three episodes left. Oh, it's disappointing. It's disappointing when you feel like they're not going to finish strong. <laughs> oh, that I mean, it's like it's like Game of Thrones, but at least then it's like Better Call Saul was like, oh, it's the this whole thing is great, and then right before the end, it's this dud of an episode, and I'm like, yeah, maybe maybe they can end up strong with Game of Thrones. It was like. I don't, this quality has been bad for three seasons now. I don't know how they're going to pull it out. And they didn't. Yeah. Have you seen, have, are y'all interested at all in seeing that Game of Thrones like prequel that's kind of coming out? It no. doesn't look great. No, I, I've excited. lost all interest. Are, are you going to watch the Lord of the Rings show? They bought the rights for like a billion dollars or something. I mean, they have put so much money behind this show. They bought the rights to the backstory as presented in the movies so they didn't buy the rights to tell the silmarillion story just whatever the third age was presented as in those movies they bought the rights to the appendices of the original that's that's what sorry yeah that's that what it is which is like like a very obscure contract it's just <laughs> a time percentage line. is all it is it's like a percentage like one one or two percent of the actual silmarillion so they can't tell any of the story. They have to condense everything down, and and it, it really looks like why did you, why did you bother, or why didn't you? You already spent this much money. Why didn't you go for the whole thing? Mm -hmm. I want to like it. I mean, I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, Ryan and I argue all the time about uh, how much I love the movies and how much he hates them. I don't hate the movies. Well, that you do now because don't we put the words in my mouth. I'm disappointed with them because uh, there are Peter Jackson. They became very Peter Jacksonized, mm -hmm. and uh, he put a lot of each uh, everything that he changed. I think he changed for the worse. Now he didn't change a lot, but everything he changed, I think he changed for the worse. That being said, they're brilliant. They're brilliant movies. I, I love those movies. They're, they're so, I mean, my first my first exposure to Lord of the Rings was the Hobbit cartoon by Rankin Bass when I was like two or three. Maybe even younger than that. I don't remember, but yeah, that. So my my impression of the Hobbit or the Lord of the Rings even is that it's it's not quite the books. Or they also did uh, Return of the King too. Uh, yeah, yeah. They and I mean, say what you will about the Lord of the Rings cartoon, but it was 
it's memorable. Well, you were two or three and you remember it. I think that's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't watch the Lord of the Rings cartoon. I, I don't remember really anything from when I was I'm glad it wasn't the boys. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's plenty of stuff I'm sure that my dad watched that I'm glad that I don't remember. Um, no, hold on. I do remember heavy metal. Sure. I have childhood yeah. memories of heavy metal and I'm like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't associate that with with me being younger than like 15 or 16 at the least but uh um yeah that i didn't watch the lord of the rings cartoon until i was like in high school or something but um i i still like that one quite a bit i saw heavy metal i was 13 and believe me i had a 13 year old's reaction to it this is the most amazing thing it's ever the most movies. awesome movie ever <laughs> yeah yeah i'm pretty sure heavy metal it. to midnight movies when sykes did midnight movies they did that yeah, they did. Wow. Back in the day, yes. I, I can yeah. imagine that being really cool in theaters. Oh, uh, it, well, it was for a teenage boy. Yeah. <laughs> it felt okay. so. they, they, they did like heavy metal and Rocky Horror Picture Show and Pink Floyd's The Wall, uh, I Caligula, you know, it's like just, yeah, but, but you know, your, your basic teenage fair. In public? Well, it wasn't a drive-in theater. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> midnight movies. You got to go in. You got to buy a ticket. Uh, that's give typical it to you a lot of brown theaters. Paper bag and uh, let you in. They put Chris, a code over you so no one I'm, sees you. I'm, I'm you just know. imagining watching The Wall with other people. I think I might have seen it, like, when I've watched it, it'd be, like, one other person in the room, and I'd be like, okay, prepare yourself. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Dallas. We had the Inwood, which was a fantastic mm. theater back in the... 80s and 90s it was all cult classic films that show all throughout the weekend did they ever show a racer head yeah they've oh. shown a racer head they've shown they've shown uh they've shown japanese anime they they'd show um you know everything that's been mentioned here anything that was odd or, or strange the inwood would show back in the day well I, that's, I don't know they probably still do but it's, it's been what 40 years now that's i'm like, actually cool, really like alamo draft house is kind of yeah. bad right yeah, yeah. We've got yeah. like the classic film series that they do at Cinemark sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Don't do that sometimes. Time. They used to... mm -hmm. I'm still kicking myself. I did not go to see Lawrence of Arabia when they did it mm -hmm. at the Cinemark because that's that's a film that you needs to be seen on the on the big screen. It's true. Well, and then they started in the last couple of years. Um, they started just like almost streaming it from Terminal. It's like I oh, think yeah. I think Cinemark has like a contract with Turner Classic Movies or something like that. And so wow. actually having it having being, like the real right or, what you, or, or what the whatever digital, they're doing whatever whatever digital. they're doing they're doing that so we've had so many two, two two movies that we got free passes for because it kept jacking up or and it go oh. through like, oh like, man green or it was like yeah. tint, stripes was like tinted green <laughs> and, like, and sounds of the lambs we did mm. they had to stop it completely um yeah 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 that was disappointing mm. but maybe they'll get the hang of it we'll find out yeah it seems like they're they're having a really hard time transitioning to the like i mean people want to do this stuff at home like i think the the big theater experience really seems like it's it's kind of going away these days like don't I, do I, that don't I, saw, it. <laughs> I know i i mean it's I, had a big, big upswing the last few months though chris yeah I mean. and i i love the theater experience it's just like like i remember like there was this twitter thread where someone posted like the the hours to some like um some big theater in new york and it was like the whole well, it was like the whole theater schedule and it was just the doctor strange movie yeah like, like yeah. nothing else like all screens all times and all showings was just doctor strange well and it was weird so like we go to the mall we have the amc thing i mean we'll go to cinemark sometimes but uh we've got that amc deal that's like 20 bucks a month which i think is great because i mean how many people have like a planet fitness membership and they just like keep that going you don't see them they're members you know <laughs> uh, but like you look at their screenings i mean a few weeks ago I was thinking I was going to take my grandmother and her friend to go see the Elvis movie, you oh, know, yeah. Elvis movie. and it's not there. And I'm like, well, I guess we'll have to go to Cinemark. And then it comes to the week that we're going to do it and it's back. So they had like, I guess when Thor came out or something, they devoted, they took those theaters and they devoted all of those theaters plus to Thor because they were like, well, we're going to get in a lot of people here. And so I guess maybe they're just cycling differently. 
I don't know. It was a little weird. There's all also like about this happened about seven years ago. Like our movie theaters wouldn't have the same movies. Mm -hmm. Um, so it would yeah. it was either one or the other, and you'd be like, Oh, I hope it goes to this theater or whatever. And then like somewhere around like 2016, everything was at everything. So, so now they're directly so, so, so now so now it's hard to like it, maybe an indie movie comes in, it doesn't have room because you know you've got three or four screens for Thor or whatever. Yeah, and that's that's really that's, that's been what that's been coming along. It's not like we got a whole lot of indie movies, regardless. We got some, we got I know, some, but we did get some, they're fewer now. <laughs> I actually got to go see uh, since since my wife and child are out of town. I actually got to go with a friend to go see Nope. Uh, no, no, good. we saw Nope. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Wasn't um, that so yeah, cool it. and unexpected? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. I thought it was like an apocalypse movie. I didn't think it was going to be like like a right. hard UFO like thing. Was. Like it's it's mm -hmm. so it's just so wild. Um, listeners, friend, uh, I'm going to spoil one little thing that happens in that movie, so tune out for like the next 10 seconds, okay? Three, two, one. Uh, they, the Akira bike slide was the most amazing thing I've seen in a live action film in a long time. Uh, I, I saw it, my friend and I looked at each other, like, like gasp, like, <gasps> like, it just, we were just in silence, like, they did it. It's, uh -huh. it's perfect. They did it so perfectly. Um, okay, end of spoilers, that's it. I just, I was, I'm so astounded that they did that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, that movie was was really great, and it's kind of made me like kick myself that I missed all of uh, uh, Jordan Peele's other movies. But um, you didn't yeah, that see, was... you haven't seen the others? No, I haven't. I, I just I I, like, haven't... I haven't seen Candyman. I don't do a lot he of horror. He didn't, he didn't direct Candyman. Well, but wasn't he involved in? He Candyman? produced it. I'm sure he's involved. He is involved. I mean, okay, but, but I mean, like, what else we it's got? Get out. Get it's out was us. great and us I, yes we saw all those yeah. i really i really want to see get out and i've heard us is kind of like i really i loved us yeah okay yeah but this I, has I definitely saw, been I saw like twice, I saw it twice in the theater oh wow uh but yeah this watching nope has been like a like it was like a big sign saying like you like you've got to watch the other ones they're all quality so that's going to be my plan for the next few weeks is trying to track them down if i can so um, I've actually, I actually wanted to ask, what is the most challenging and what is the most interesting food that you've cooked from a movie? Oh, Lord. What was, what's something that is, oh, remember when you made those chicken wings and it said to use some baking powder and like, they looked, what were we, what movie were we doing? There was some sort doing, of like Coke in it. We were it. doing blow. We were doing blow. And it looked like we, we tried to, we were like, well, maybe it's theme. It looks like there's just like Coke all over. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he was like, well, it says you use baking powder. And I was like, it was like a teaspoon of baking powder. Don't like toss it in baking powder. Oh <laughs> they no. They were terrible. Oh Lord. No, like a lot, like a lot of stuff, a, a lot of the stuff on there that we do on the show is stuff that we're doing for the first time. So it's not like we know how to do it. And even shopping for the stuff like takes a long time. Like you might have to go to a couple of different stores to get everything you need. We did these like Cuban, pork Cuban sandwiches yeah, from good. the movie Chef. And it was like a three day process because you have to do this stuff with this brine for 36 hours. And then like all this other stuff, then, then the cook and the cut. And then like, so you, when you, when you're, reading recipes you're kind of thinking oh, okay it's gonna be cut and dry this will be what it's how long it's gonna to take to do and then it's you know it, it ends up being like a lot more complicated than you think if you like watching the binging with babish um videos or anything on youtube and they cut that stuff like really quick you're just like oh easy peasy it took up and, two minutes yeah and, 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 then yeah. You, and then you get into the kitchen and you're like what have i done <laughs> <laughs> yeah or he'll like he'll yeah, even like, say in his narration okay. like yeah i'm, I'm sorry i think i, I think i spoke oh, sorry over no he makes it sound like we're doing all of these super complicated recipes like all the time that take <laughs> so much time that is not true like one time i think it was robocop we did a baby food we did tasting. baby baby food tasting <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't eat food you know it's like basically baby he food. eats baby food he so baby food so we had a baby food tasting it's not that bad <laughs> i've 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 ha i've told myself before like if if this baby doesn't eat her food, I'm going to have to show her that it's okay. And so far it hasn't happened yet, but I'm, I'm, it's approaching the day when it's like, 
I'm going to have to take this puree of mac and cheese vegetables thing and I'm going to have to to eat it to prove that it's not poison and I'm just dreading that but she does she has these like little like little rice cakes right like little little thin like patties almost um like really really easy to to like chew off and like kind of kind of break off or whatever because she doesn't have teeth yet but um I I looked at it and it looked like she was kind of having trouble because she's she's six months old she doesn't know how to like chew things right she doesn't know how to actually take a food and then break it off in her mouth and uh and i was like oh look this is what you do and like so she was holding it i broke off the the bit at the bottom and kind of like chewed on it. i was like oh that's that's kind of good and <laughs> i said that my wife passed by and she looked at me and she's like that's really good isn't it they're like how big of a bite did you take exactly she's like oh i just bit the like i took the whole top half of it off it's like i got I, I got a little bit what are you talking about you took the top half it's going to be like one of those like midnight binges in the I kitchen. Think, the next day it'll be like, where's the baby snacks? It'll be like, I, oh, yeah, oh, I think, I think that's my, that might've been what happened. But then again, the baby was, I think she's, she's a little better about it now. Uh, she, she can actually chew on it before she was just like biting it and like smiling and it, was, it would all just come out of her mouth. The first few times she would take it and like, try to like insert it like a, like a, a chip into her head like a cyberpunk thing so um yeah she's she's advancing a little bit or maybe uh, she, every, what she liked it so much she wanted to like merge somehow yeah no yeah she wanted to put it in her brain i guess yeah, really so I'll, brilliant I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share videos or whatever with my friend and like just things like with her trying to eat food or like trying to learn how to clap or whatever and he's like he, he also has a little daughter and, and he'll be like uh man she's she's pretty smart you can actually see like a like an acorn rolling around in the tin can of her head <laughs> like yeah no yeah there's something going on in there well let's change subjects otherwise chris will be talking about his daughter for the next three hours you, you have no idea well, we were about to bring up our dog so that's <laughs> oh hey what kind of dogs do you have you know With, good call like move it on like our, the, our resident dog is a pit bull um, She's the best. Her name's Rizzo. She was oh. in a PSA for um, heartworm meds. Oh, we yeah, we made a like a, a horror. We made like a horror PSA movie um, for on like heartworm meds. I got murdered. I was delivering a pizza. It, 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 the, wow. the story was, you know, I didn't want to give my dog something that's got a bunch of chemicals in it. it was and like, and, like, and, then, and then and then and then and then she was out murdering people in this like, Chucky hey. outfit. Um, <laughs> And I'm still like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that heartworm. And then like, she attacks me at the very end. I like, oh, I turn on the, like the bathroom light and she's like right there with a knife and like, <laughs> uh, me, and like I get her to take the heartworm medication right before she kills me. And then she's back to normal. And <laughs> so she's a film star. Which is not actually how heartworms work, by the way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just FYI. Don't yeah, my, but, my mom, yeah. my mom raises pit bulls. She, the, the one that she had when I was youngest had had heartworms too. It was, yeah, it's, they're not quite slasher villains. No, they're a lot slower and more deadly. Well, maybe yeah. not, more deadly, but definitely slower. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I have a fondness in my heart for pit bulls and I'm, I really, especially for people who will take the time to, to like raise them and get them to like, in a, in a really good home. That's, that's something I really admire. No, no, they're, they're so sweet and loyal. And I mean, like they used to be called nanny dogs because they would take mm -hmm. care of the kids. See how I brought it right back around. Yeah. <laughs> back to children. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm quite ready to let my my daughter be around pit bulls just because they're like all they're like all muscle. They're pretty big. Like I oh they're any they're 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 sweethearts though. Yeah. They any are. kind of dog that's yeah. that they were yeah. bred to want to do whatever a person tells them to do. It's exactly. Good. They're very sweet and loyal, which is the mm. whole reason that they have such a bad rap is because then they can be because they're so loyal and mm. very, very strong, you can train them to like do a bunch of things that they shouldn't be doing, you know. Yeah. But, you know, so like you could do that with any dog. It just yeah. wouldn't be effective. And uh, any dog that's <laughs> over like 10 pounds, I wouldn't really want want my daughter to, yeah. to hang out with really. Like I'm only just now letting her like touch the cat. And literally the first day that she decided it was it was time to to interact with it, grabbed her tail like this. Yeah. Like, like just a little bit of the, the tip of the tail still sticking out. And you could see it like 
like moving her around like she she was really calm about it but i could tell by the way she was moving her tail i was like okay this is a situation brewing and this, this is it's not so great right now so yeah now they're the, the bull, best we've got a dog awesome. that big do yeah. what no well like our our friend like her daughter when she was like i don't know not even one crawling all over pulling her ears you know but <laughs> that's what they were originally kind of raised to do you know they're in that nanny dog thing where they just take care of the kids you know <laughs> and they're like you can do whatever i don't care yeah they're really but, chill yeah no she she gets along with all the fosters and um you know they're not all her favorite but she you know teaches them how to be a dog <laughs> <laughs> how how does the foster thing work what what do you guys do so for this particular one, uh, so we're not like long, you, they're local rescues that they've got their fosters and they've just got that dog until they find them at home locally. So this, this rescue is called the Pets Underdog Express mm -hmm. and it partners with a, an organization up in New York State around Syracuse called Helping Hounds. Mm -hmm. And um, so we basically pay for like all the vetting and everything, getting them to where they need to be health wise to get them up there. They pay for like transport um, and you've got them for maybe like a month or so, you know, I think we've, we had one or two dogs that we had for like two plus months. We've had one with the uh, heartworms that, you know, mm. that takes a while. Um, but yeah, you're crate training them, you know, you're making sure that they know how to walk on a leash, uh, that they don't have any behavioral issues or anything but like that. They can, um, they, they're ready to be, be with a family. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's actually, it's, it's not that hard. Um, <laughs> it's basically, you're just giving them a safe place before they can go up there and maybe teach them some stuff, you know? Uh, but they all are just there, sweethearts. There's less dogs available in New York state than there are in Texas because it, they have stronger breeding laws and puppy, no puppy mills and oh. kind of all that stuff. So there isn't just the, how we have like just millions and millions of dogs that get put down in Texas mm -hmm. um, for all these kind of like lax laws and reasons mm -hmm. and pet and owners and people get their pets spayed and neutered. Um, it's more of a, a uh, I don't know, what's the word? you want to adopt you don't buy you know you'd like look down on somebody that bought a dog up there you know like you're like what are you doing you know why would you do that <laughs> yeah. so yeah so it's not that they don't have dogs but they just don't have the overwhelming drowning in dogs that are being dumped and you know all that that we do here so yeah okay. It's a little sad, yeah. <laughs> but they, they're, they live better lives than we do. Honestly, we're just like, we thought we were great dog owners, like dog parents. Um, these dogs are like going out on boats and like, get, they've got like a lobster, you know, on a vacation to Maine. <laughs> it's adorable. They've got like horse friends <laughs> living their best lives. Yeah. So, oh, so when these dogs go to live on a farm, they're actually going to live on a farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the last ones. So Goose, uh, named after, well, you know, Top Gun. Yeah. obviously Top Gun. He, uh, he got adopted. She works on a horse farm. And so he, oh. she, he goes to work with her <laughs> on this horse farm. That's really great. Yeah. Well. Just like, I want to go to work on a horse farm. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to go visit him. Sure. We need to do a tour of dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll I'll sacrifice any work time for dogs. I mean, the, the other day I was, uh, Joe, was it you and I coming down the stairs for something uh, over here the other day? And yeah, the... was it was it coming back from the summer sizzler that they had that, that we went to at Fane? I, I thought was that it coming it back like... from that. Yeah, maybe that was it. I don't remember, but uh, one of the learning center people had uh, just just had their dog there, and I was like, "Oh, well, hold on." Yeah. I just made a complete detour the other way to to go hang out with this person's dog. Yeah, it's Absolutely. like a, a really cute. Was it a, a Yorkshire Terrier? It was a. Uh, I think it was a Scotty. Or Scottish Terrier. It was a it was a blonde Scotty, and I remember that it was yeah. it was okay. it was significant, especially because it was like a, a weird color for for that that breed yeah. of dog. 
Yeah. And I believe the dog's name was Shortbread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shorty. Yeah, I, I, I won't one. remember people's names, but like dog names. I have no idea who the guy I'll was. I'll remember this No forever. idea. <laughs> <laughs> yep, always make a detour for a dog. Mm -hmm. Dog detour. <laughs> Unless they don't look like they want to be bothered, in which case I, I respect a dog's sovereignty. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you do that whole like kneel in front of them and you're just kind of like, here's my hand, you know, do you want to smell me? It's a whole deal. Yeah. I, I tried to, uh, I, I had an ex-girlfriend who asked me to go feed her uh, the gigantic Mastiff. I think it was just a Mastiff. I don't remember. He's like, yeah, go, go out and feed the dogs or whatever if you could. I was like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. I love dogs. Uh, and I went out there and um, I, I poured their big food canister without letting it like sniff my hand or whatever and um i i will never forget it like getting on hind legs and like like bear approaching me with its arms out and uh like i thought i was going to die like it was it was such a traumatic experience and and she was like you didn't like let her smell you or anything i was like i didn't no dog etiquette whatsoever yeah i know so now <laughs> Now I respect dog etiquette. I'll, I'll any kind of dog. I'll reach out, let them smell me first, because I don't want to be um, mauled by a giant bear dog. Yeah, yeah. No, well, we do that. You know, we walk Rizzo like all the time, and mm. we'll go out to like Sykes Lake or whatever around the neighborhood. But you know, kids are always like dog, and Rizzo's great. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, like they could just be like, ah, you know, and she'd be like, <laughs> "This is wonderful. Let me lick your face." But, you know, we don't want to build that expectation of all dogs are like this. So we're like, yeah. you know, you want to put your hand out and everything like that. And so that the next dog that they do that to, maybe, maybe they walk away from that encounter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the best. No, I'm just like, she will look your face. You can totally pet her. She, your face is on her level. It's going to get, going to get licked. It's going <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> The sacrifices we make. I know, I know, it's true. Well, um, Joe or Ryan, did you have any questions you wanted to ask while we were all here? Um, well, we, we talked about the, the, the foster dogs and we talked a little bit about your podcast. Have you had, and we talked about the food that you've, you've done for it. Have you had a favorite movie that you talked about so far or are, are there ones that you already have on your on your list for hey we've got to make sure we do that one there's so we've got so many movies still on our list that it's just like gosh we love this movie i love this movie but it's hard to pick like i feel like scotty's probably got like a top five list like in his mind um but let's see for one I, I think for me it's about the guest and how into it they are because uh -huh. a lot of times you know I mean that's maybe why so many of our favorite favorite movies like stay on that list because we'll ask the guests like hey what's one of your favorite movies what's one of your like go-to like comfort movies and so like we have a friend uh Samantha Langsdale that she she was at UNT now she's She's at Berkeley now. I can't remember, but um, she's one of my favorite guests to have on the show, you know, because she really gets into what is it that she teaches? Philosophy. Philosophy. So we really like drill down into the nitty gritty on all of these movies. And I just love getting into that. I love getting into that side. Yeah. Um, now, Scotty will get into like cinematography and directors. And I'm like, who's the person that played this character? And he's like, <laughs> this. And here's all the information on him. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> but yeah. I did um, Die Hard with my dad. Uh -huh. um, a few years ago, my dad took me to like all the Die Hard movies when I, when we were, I was growing up. Um, we bought it. It's like we no, you couldn't like in eighty eight and eighty nine, you couldn't buy a VHS like really easily. Mm -hmm. So you would rent it, and then you'd um, you'd you'd match up like two VCRs, and you'd record it on a blank VHS. Yep. Uh -huh. So like, if I really really loved a movie, they my parents would do that. We're like going back to the very beginning of this episode <laughs> where we were talking. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we so we talked about that. We talked about Die Hard. Like Shannon made like some ice cream Twinkie cake or something. Oh yeah, I did. That was delicious. That was so good. Mm -hmm. Have you? I've never made a homemade Twinkie. 
you know what? Ooh. Surprisingly easy and delicious. You know, have you had the, the have you had the Twinkie Wiener sandwich? No, no from no, UHF. That's not no, separate. no, but that's a good. That's a good. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to make this. Thank you. So much. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I apologize for even bringing that into the equation because every time I watch that movie, I see the Twinkie Wiener sandwich, and I'm just like. Like I, the part of my soul gets disgusted. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Uh, see, see, if that. you're looking, if you're looking at a, a sandwich in a movie, you got to do Birds of Prey and make that breakfast sandwich. Man, uh, I dream about that uh, sandwich. Movie, Shannon. Samantha. Yeah, Langston. that that sandwich is like, yeah, that thing is like. It's going on the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, that is delicious. What, what we've got coming down the pipe is like on Saturday, like we, me and Ben Rimmer have done all of the John Wick movies, except for the third one. We're okay. going to do the third one. And, you know, because how much can we really talk about John Wick? Um, so what we're going to do is talk about which Keanu Reeves character from his filmography would like do the best in this scene or in this part of the movie. I can't um, wait until y'all like bring Lake House Keanu Reeves <laughs> <laughs> into it. It'll be like he's the one that like picks up the dog and like loves on the dog, you know. <laughs> like, uh, Back in the day in the bulletin board I was on, uh we had this uh this just this thread that started with uh pick an actor and put together an action team based on various of their roles basically mm. and which action star actually yeah. makes the best action team and we all came to the conclusion it was kurt russell actually yeah okay snake this is the Jennifer diversity and... of roles uh -huh. that he's played yeah. over the years for sure yeah but then you put neo into any kind of action movie and it's oh, like again keanu reeves a really good one too keanu reeves is a really yeah. good one too but well oh, hold on what's the one where he's like is it always be or maybe or something yeah, like it, that and he's yeah. they're at this really fancy restaurant and they put like headphones on so that they can listen to what the, the animals that they're the going to be serving that they're eating sound, sound as like. they're eating it and he's crying <laughs> <laughs> just tears rolling down his face i want to see he would he, he, he would just swoon all the bad guys in john wick three is like he what would. that's uh, where that character is like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, but yeah, so uh, Ben Rimmert, he's over at the Public Information Office. At, oh, well, he's no. at Shepherd. Well, he's at Shepherd, but it's the Public Information Office at Shepherd. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he does like all these cool videos for them. And so he'll like bring all of his stuff over and they like, they had, what kind of tasting did y'all have one time? We had like a whiskey tasting for, whiskey for tasting. The, I think, the first John Wick movie. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. like, kind of got all these different kinds there's like some something terrible and something like okay and then a friend of ours like over at pelican was like don't buy that it's super expensive you can just like borrow my my bottle and like you know, don't, drink it, don't yeah. drink it all don't drink it all yeah but that was fun yeah they do like cool like little teaser videos for that so that's really fun so. that's cool mm -hmm. yeah but well, all right. Uh, we we usually try to keep these within an hour, and and I don't want to keep you you two here for an awful long time. Um, don't lie, you'd love to keep me here for an awful long time. forever. Just keep basically going. Like every single podcast we've had, especially lately, I've been like, I've got it. We've got to we've got to start wrapping things up because we can be here for a really really long time just talking. <laughs> and that's, um, a, that's a that's a real podcast. It's podcast time management. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I've, I've listened to some podcasts, like especially like gaming centered ones that are like five and a half hours long and like an hour of it will be like the host just talking about one video game that they're playing. Uh -huh. And like at a certain point, I'm like, oh, oh, like you're talking about yourself having fun doing something. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm not I'm done listening to this. It's not interesting or fun or anything so like around hour three for you is that what yeah you're to <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there, there's, there's a podcast yeah that called... would be yeah but um but yeah so games. we we try to keep things kind of kind of more manageable here in this one yeah. so um i think we are yeah we're close to the end of our uh script actually well i say script but it's more a like line. just a, a schedule to keep things on track. It's like so basic overview outline. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's a better one. Um, Scotty, were you trying to say something about a podcast? There's a podcast called Bandsplain where they talk about like a whole band's like history. Oh. And it's, and you, so it'll tell you everything about like how they came together, about their success, about everything. They will play like a lot of their songs, but like mm-hmm. they are like five hour, three to five hour podcasts. So it's almost like too intimidating to start. It's like, I would love to know everything about like Led Zeppelin or something, but it's like, I just don't, I just, I'm like, I, I, I can't do it. I can't face it. So, <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a podcast I listen to called uh, The Last Podcast on the Left. They do like true crime, supernatural, uh, just general horror adjacent stuff. Um, mm-hmm. They they do like one to two hour uh, episodes and then they'll have like, depending on how long the series is, like I think their longest one was like five episodes and it was about uh, Jim Jones. But they try to keep all the episodes down to like that reasonable amount so you're not like skipping through like like you said like a five hour podcast yeah but uh they have uh, a spinoff on their network um that's called no dogs in space and it's it's that it's like it's uh exploring like bands history like their best songs and uh kind of just an overview of like like bands that were important in different kinds of movements so they don't talk about like a huge array of bands but they do go into deep dives of bands that they think are important so that's a good podcast if you're interested in music i'll generally like try to keep it to like 30 minutes to an hour like how to money i love like how to money personal finance stuff and then there's like that's like 30 minutes revisionist history by like malcolm gladwell you know like that's Mm. like an hour it's so well done (laughs) perfect I've, i've really wanted to get into um uh hardcore history um i think it's dan carlin maybe but like yeah those episodes are like three hours long and he'll have like a whole series that's like 20 episodes or something and i'm like uh yeah i i like i understand that the value of of this content is probably worth more than than a lot of things that i could be doing with my time but i know that i'm going to to completely fade out after like hour two of the first one so i i yeah i totally get that um campus and community events on the horizon okay so i came up with i found the our next event the date all right oh yeah yeah. good deal for the circuit (laughs) so that one is actually going to be on august 16th that's a tuesday at 6 p.m and it's going to be at inspire which is uh that's dusty sternadel her her uh company inspire game changers um but we're all going to be learning about managing up the art of cultivating an effective professional relationship with your supervisor (laughs) so yeah important stuff i mean i am self-employed so i don't have a supervisor how do i treat myself better these are (laughs) things i need to know (laughs) very interesting what what time does that start that's at six. Six, okay. So generally our events will be at either, our monthly events will be at either noon or six. So they'll either be lunch or evening. Yeah. Okay, but, very cool. Uh, that's our next one coming down the pike. All right, so listeners, please treat yourself. Go uh, go check it out. Absolutely. Oh, um, let's see, Ninth Street Studios. They're, they're actually having an art opening for uh, Carlos, who's over at uh, the Fame Fine Arts Center. Oh. So he has an opening. Is at, it Carlos Ailman? Is it Ailman or Alamon? I I I was trying well, intentionally just, not to say the uh, last well, name because uh, I was like, I'm gonna. Well, you say just said wrong. Carlos, like he share, but yeah. Well, <laughs> obviously he's got his own show. Um, but he'll be over at Ninth Street Studios. Obviously, it's on Ninth Street, and uh, that starts at six. Although you and it's free to the public um they do have like a discussion generally at like five that you can pay for i think that's like ten dollars a ticket so but those are generally like excellent shows love carlos uh aka share um (laughs) can't wait to see what he's put together (laughs) so from the msu family (laughs) (laughs) all right awesome um some things here that uh joe wrote down you took this from the uh discover wichita falls page I, yeah, must have uh, from that. So, yes. listeners, if you if you really want to know what's going on in town, go check that out. They'll they'll have yes. like a big list of it. But um, uh, Art Walk 
for August will be the uh, 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 the, uh, the, the August one will probably the already fourth. have happened by the time this releases. Probably so. Yeah, it's August fourth. So. Um, yeah, but, so but September, September is September one's actually yeah. on September first. <laughs> so, yeah, the September Art Walk is September first. Um, again, if you haven't checked that out, I, I encourage all our listeners to go support our local businesses, go see what we've got going on in town. That's always a fun time. Um, the eighth, the Wichita Falls Museum of Art, uh, hosting Live at the Lake with Jay Hollis. Um, the theater's production of Beauty and the Beast will run from September 9th to October 1st. And there's a uh, one night only concert on September 20th from the Jersey Tenors. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, we're actually going to be talking with um, this is Leilani. Yeah, Leilani. We'll, we'll Leilani. talk with Leilani for September and she's going to yeah. talk about the local music scene. Oh, okay. yeah, we just saw her. Yeah, oh, really? She's awesome. Yeah. She's amazing. Love yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. She would all right. Be sounds happy. cool. That sounds great. Um, anything that we're all that we might be looking forward to coming up? For the future? Um, there's like, I think the backdoor theater is going to be coming out with the uh, trailer park because actually somebody over at the Fane Fine Arts Center is going to be in that play. And so I've been hearing lots about it. And I think their dress rehearsal is like in the next couple of weeks. So that should be, that should be coming out soon. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll just mention this because you guys were talking about bands. Uh, my favorite band in the world right now is a Japanese band named Bandmate. If you have not seen them, I honestly think they're the best rock band that's ever existed. Um, and they, 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 they play a type of music I haven't heard on the radio for 20 years. Um, um, all girl band. Um, uh, the, some of their biggest fans are the members of Led Zeppelin who said they're so much better than they ever were and stuff like that. I mean, it's just a fantastic band, fantastic musicians. Um, I can't, again, I stopped paying attention to modern music in 1995, really, for the most part. They are the first band where I bought their complete catalog in, in, in like 30 years. What was that? Band made? Band made. M A I D. It was started by a girl working at a maid cafe and she didn't like the music they were playing. And she, she said, well, well, you guys should play more rock music because I really like rock music. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. And she said, fine, I'll form my own band. And she did. That's great. That's what, how I want to live my life. You know, <laughs> I don't like this. I want to do it differently. And there's like, and then I did. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the I'll dream that's the dream so the original the idea is because in japan you, you need some sort of catch is that they all wear made outfits on on stage but they basically at some point the uh the the basis said yeah i'm not doing that <laughs> i respect that <laughs> but uh, if you've never seen them before again they 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 dress funny because again they're going for the whole you know stick stick but uh, again, uh, what I love watching is some of the reaction where it'd be like a, a band director who listens to him and goes, who are these women? They are the, some of the best musicians I've ever heard in my life. And they, they talk about the fact that every time they go back to the chorus, they go back to the bridge or something like that in, in the music, they change it up a little bit. It's never the same thing twice. Where most bands, you know, they'll go, they'll play the main riff. They'll have the chorus and then they'll play the main riff again. Then they'll play the chorus. They'll play the minute riff. Every time they change it up, they make it a little bit different every time they go through it. And it's very complex stuff. It's, 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 it's hard stuff. Let me just say that I, there's some musicians who are listening to it going, I can't do that. I've been playing like for 20 years. Like bringing some jazz influence into it. Bringing some jazz into it, like change it up. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I have not, I have yet to hear a bad song from them. They're that good. They're just, it's, it's amazing stuff. I can't, I can't harp them enough. I'm going to say, if you haven't heard them, Bandmate, they're touring the U.S. in, in two months, and hopefully they'll get more on people's uh, radar at, at that time. But they are, they are a fantastic band. Again, it's, if you like uh, classic rock um, from like the uh, 70s and 80s and you miss it, that's what these girls do. Nice. Have to check them out. Uh, if we're talking about Japanese things, um, by the time this comes out, um, 
the next installment of my favorite video game series, Xenoblade, uh, will have its next sequel out. I love Xenoblade. It's I I'm I all my friends hate me for it. Uh, that comes out on the 29th. Please support them. They're amazing. Um, <laughs> all your friends um, hate you for it. Now, that's that? interesting. I said all your friends hate you for that. Mm-hmm. I, They'll look at that. <laughs> I, yeah, because I'll pull out like an old scroll and be like, here's some lore that you don't care about. I'll just tell them about it. Um, so 10,000 years ago, like, yeah, they, they're sick of me talking about it. Um, and also what Ryan will hate me talking about uh, is that the new Gundam series has a uh trailer out it's beautiful it's it's got it's it's going to be the first female protagonist the series has had in 45 years well let me uh, correct people out there so they don't misunderstand i do not hate gundam what i hate, hate me is that's what i'm saying every single piece of gundam franchise out there and then coming to my office every day to talk about it with me that's what well, that's the part i hate okay so i'll tell you right now my favorite spinoff is after war gundam act um <laughs> No, I'm, I'm running not, I'm out of time, so let's move it along. Yeah. Uh, new series, Witch from Mercury, comes out October. Check out the trailer. It's it's incredible. I can't wait. That's all I've got to look forward to because uh, Baby takes up all my time. <laughs> Joe, you got anything you're looking forward to? Uh, now that I saw Thor, I think I'm I'm good for right now. Um, well, She-Hulk comes out next so month. I'm it does. I weeks, am looking so. forward to She-Hulk. Yes. The She-Hulk series, yeah. Ooh. I think it's going to be fun. That'll be fun. I've always wanted to see more of She-Hulk, so I'm I'm glad that they're actually doing like a, a thing with her. Well, and I really like that actress, uh, Tatiana Maslany. She was mm-hmm. the girl that did uh, the girl. She's a woman, you know, uh, oh. but, that did uh, Orphan yeah. Black. <laughs> and Are we all caught won, up like on... all of the awards. For Orphan, Orphan Black was incredible. Heck yes. Are we all caught up on Miss Marvel? I am. Uh, yeah, I I've, I finished Miss yeah. Marvel. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, I can't wait for the the thing that they teased at the end of that in five years. <laughs> I think just like two. It's not, not five. It's not in their slate, so... Actually, it, 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 at the San Diego Comic-Con, they released all of five, uh, phase five, and some of uh, phase six. It's, it's coming out there. next year, Chris. Mm-hmm. It's not in there. Yeah, it is. You show me where it is after this is over. I will. I will yeah. after it. It's called Marvels, is what it's. No, called. no, no. That's not. That's not I what I'm like talking about. Y'all just are throwing down the gauntlet. You know? I am. <laughs> oh. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. No. Yes, it is. That's, like, well, that's, that's what you're not, not talking. About. Okay, that's the only thing I can think of that you that you might be talking about. If you're not talking about that, then you'll have to talk to me about it, what it is. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know. Anyway. Oh, that. Oh, pl- that's not even a teaser. That's just that's just them. They had two that's teasers. That's just them peeking at the audience. They had two teasers in a row for their last two franchises. That's just them weaking at the audience. It'd be a really hard yeah. week. We're, 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 we're starting to go to a whole other discussion, guys. We gotta Okay. So remember when we were wrapping it up. <laughs> let's 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 wrap it up. Thank you so much to our guests. Uh, one more time if you wanted to mention your podcast. Mac and cheese movies. Comfort food and comfort movies. That's uh, available on all your pod- podcasting platforms and on our website, macandcheesemovies.com. Awesome. Sounds Thank you good. Um, and you've been listening to Club Moffat Talks. That's it. That's all I've got. That's it. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> all right. Thank That's you, everybody, for listening, and we will see you next time. Thanks, you guys. Very well. Very well.